Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to Fallout 4's DLC Far Harbor. My name's Camel and this video is going to be a walkthrough guide in which I will show you how to acquire the unique harpoon gun known as Skipper's Last Stand. Now Skipper's Last Stand is a reward for the quest Ship Breaker. Now getting the quest Ship Breaker is a pain in the ass. Now there's one way to get the quest but there's two ways to get to the point in which you can get the quest. The first of which which I could not get to work is you wander around Far Harbor, the island that is, until randomly and radiantly you pick up a signal called the shipbreaker radio signal. Once tuning into the signal you will get a signal strength. You then have to walk in the direction of the signal. Little notifications will pop up telling you whether the signal strength is going up or down. It's kind of like that game hot and cold. Once you get to 90 to 100% radio signal strength you will see the unique fog crawler named shipbreaker. Upon killing shipbreaker you will get the quest. Now the second way to get to this point is to just walk around the island and without the radio signal coming up you can just run into Shipbreaker. Now Shipbreaker randomly spawns and despawns and it only sticks around for a couple of minutes. So there's no single location, there aren't even multiple locations that I can tell you to go to. It randomly spawns everywhere on the island of Far Harbor. So once you find the unique Fog Crawler Shipbreaker through either of those two methods you need to kill Shipbreaker. Now of course this is a tough task as it is a legendary Fog Crawler. Straight after killing it the quest Shipbreaker will begin. That's right, the quest begins once you kill the fog crawler shipbreaker. Now once you get the quest it's super simple all you need to do is head over and speak to Longfellow who can be found at his cabin just north of the town of Far Harbor. Once there you want to talk about the topic of shipbreaker he will thank you for killing it and then reward you with the unique harpoon gun Skipper's Last Stand. Now before we look at the weapons based stats as always I have reduced my character's special attributes that's 2-1. I also have no bobblehead perk or magazine effects applied to my character what this means is we will be seeing the absolute minimum based stats of the weapon. Now personally in the first modification slot, I'm going to be going with the flechettes. Yes, it's a French word, look it up. Now this changes the projectiles into nine tiny flechette harpoons instead of the single one harpoon, and it's damn fun. And in the second slot, it's much more viable and usable when you put a sight on it, which is exactly what I'm doing, which gives better focus and sighted accuracy. You could of course go with a short scope, but that's more for sniping, which I'm not going to be doing with my shotgun harpoon gun. So now that it has been modded out the way I just did, it has a base ballistic damage of 150, it uses the harpoon as ammunition, its fire rate is 2, its range is 95, its accuracy is 70, its weight is 17.6 pounds, and its value is 1050 caps. Now as we can see up the top there, Skipper's Last Stand, and its special legendary effect plus 150 damage resistance while reloading. A very interesting effect. And because it's so damn interesting, why don't we talk about it right now? So, on the face of it, that might seem like a very strange and almost useless effect. However, something you need to know about the harpoon gun is that reload times are about 5 seconds, and you can only load one ammunition in at a time. So you shoot once, and then you have to reload for 5 seconds. Now during that 5 seconds, you are open to attacks from enemies. And of course, you won't be able to attack them unless you change weapon or until Skipper's Last Stand has finished reloading and you can shoot again. So during that reload time, what's the best thing for you? damage resistance. And in this case we get an extra 150. Now this is actually pretty damn good. On my chart of damage resistances here, sadly we don't have 150 but we do have 100. And with a damage resistance of 161% of the damage is reduced. The next one's 250 damage resistance which reduces the damage by 72%. So a third of the way between 61 and 72, we're looking at about an extra 3.5%. So the 150 damage resistance by itself is going to negate around 64 and a half percent of the original damage, provided of course that it is ballistic damage. But again, 64.5% of the damage is being stopped, only of course while you reload. But with the reload times being so long, this is actually an incredibly useful effect. It doesn't help kill your enemies any quicker by doing extra damage or anything, but it does help you stay alive to have the time to then kill your enemies. Now although the base damage is 150, which is pretty high, when applying the appropriate perks I was able to get the damage around 400 plus. I think it was about 430. And hey, that's not too bad. Considering this weapon is more of a, hey, take this while you're not looking, instead of a use it in every situation weapon, being able to deal 430 damage while not sneaking, that's pretty damn good. If you're going to sneak, you're going to be hitting the enemy for over a thousand damage, which is going to make them very, very unhappy. Now, because you only get one shot every five or six
six seconds with this weapon, I would suggest you always use it inside of that. It looks cooler and you have a much better chance of actually hitting your enemy, especially at those very long ranges. Not that you're going to be using that for those very long ranges, but the longest of ranges that you can use this for, definitely use it inside of that. Now interesting, when you mod it out the way I did with the flechettes, although only using one ammunition, it actually fires seven projectiles. Now although these smaller flechettes can only be recovered from the corpses of fallen enemies, you may actually yield more projectiles than were originally fired. So it uses one ammunition, but then it counts as seven hitting the enemy, so you have the chance to recover seven back. So all in all, a pretty cool weapon. Again, it's more useful for just one shot rather than just walking around using it full time. But if you do want to use it more than once in a single sitting, then that legendary effect is there to protect you while you reload your weapon. There is some annoying news in regards to the acquisition of the weapon. There are reports of people simply never getting the radio signal and never running into Shipbreaker. I personally never got the radio signal and I have five hours of footage of me walking around the island looking for the radio signal. Again, it randomly spawns. And on the same token, there are also people who have reported after walking around the island infinite amounts of time, they never ran into Shipbreaker. Nor did they get the radio signal, therefore they never get an opportunity to acquire the Skipper's Last Stand. So if this is the case for you, it's happening to many people. I would say don't worry, but it is pretty annoying when you can't acquire a weapon. I don't know if this is due to a bug or if it's due to just the chances being so low that it just hasn't happened for you or any of these other people yet. But again, it took me about five hours to find Shipbreaker. Again, I never got the radio signal. So keep that in mind. If you are struggling to find the radio signal or Shipbreaker, just have some peace that it's not just you. Originally, this weapon was called The Last Stand. But then, I brought a rope. Although, personally, I prefer to hop. This weapon, just like me in a bathroom, is a stand-up guy. And for the last time, please stand by while I skip out of my room before one of you kill me. Instead of Skipper's Last Stand, it's definitely Camel's Last Stand Up Comedy. And here it is, Skipper's Last Stand in action. <laughs> There you have it ladies and gentlemen, I've been Camel and this has been my weapon guide for the unique harpoon gun known as Skipper's Last Stand in Fallout 4's DLC Far Harbor. I do hope that this video helped you out in some way and if it did, I think you'd be very interested to click on the playlist button on screen. This of course will take you directly to my Fallout 4 guides playlist where you can select the videos you wish to watch freely. Or you can check in the description where it will be frequently updated with links to new Fallout 4 guides that I upload. If you can think of better puns relating to Skipper's Last Stand, please follow me on Twitter and let me know there. The link to Twitter can also be found in the description. And with all that said, it's been an absolute pleasure and I will see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there in a second.